The safest way to shut down or turn off your computer is to come down here and click on the Start button and go over and click on Shutdown. Now you don't want to unplug your computer or hit the Power button because if you cut power to the computer prematurely and it's not ready for it, you may damage your computer, either short term or long term, but we don't want to take that chance. Think of it like this. If you're working in a room and somebody comes in and turns off the lights and you're not ready, well, it's the same on the computer here. Let the computer turn off its own lights and leave the room when it's done by clicking on the shut down button. Then over to the right, you've got more options than just shutting down. You can go ahead and hover over the arrow or click on it and it gives us a menu. Up at the top, we have switch user. When you hover over it, it says switch users without closing programs. So in other words, you can have more than one user on your computer with their own user account names and passwords. So if I've got one for my wife, my two sons, and myself, if I'm working on something, for example, if I come over here, click off in a blank area, let me open up the folder, pick a file, double click, open that up, and let's say I'm working on this file and my son comes up to me and says, Dad, I need to use the computer now for my school project. And I tell him, well, you can't right now because I'm right in the middle of something. Well, I can. I can switch users. But before you do it, make sure you save your work, okay? And then go ahead and come down, click on the Start button, go over and click on the arrow, then come up and click on Switch User. What will then happen is that your programs will remain open, but your work session will be locked, so nobody else can log in without your password. So then my son can go ahead, under his account, type in his password, log in, work on that portion or that side of the computer. And then when he's done, he can log off or switch users, and then I can come back in, type in my password, my programs would still be open, and I can pick back up where I left off. Now there is a small chance, hopefully not a chance at all, that my son could come down here and click on shutdown. If he does that, he'll shut down my work session here and my open programs, and I don't want him to do that. But thank goodness that the computer has a little warning. If he tries to shut it down and there are other users who have open programs, it will tell him that. And it will ask him, are you sure you want to shut down? If he does, then we're going to have a family home evening section and give a lecture on not shutting down the computer when other people are working on it. So that's why I say, if you're going to switch users, be sure to save your work. So that way, if he does shut it down, at least you've got your saved work. You still have to turn the computer back on and open up the programs, but it's saved. Come down here, click on the arrow. Below that you have log off. What it does is it closes all your open programs and just logs off your computer and it displays your user account in front of you. It doesn't shut down the computer, it leaves it on so you don't have to turn it back on. All you have to do is go ahead and type in your password and you can log back in. Below that you have lock. Basically lock is the same as switch user. It locks the computer. So the only way you can get back into your work session is to type in your password. In other words, you can leave your programs open and you can switch user or lock it and it'll still leave them open. The only difference between the two is that when you click on switch user, not only will it lock your session, but it'll list all the other users on your computer so they can go ahead and pick their name and type in their password. Where lock doesn't list their names. It does have a button below my username that they can click on. It's called switch users and then it'll pull up their names, but it doesn't initially when you click on lock, where switch user does. That's the only difference between the two. And then you have restart. It's used to refresh your system's memory or when you're installing or uninstalling a program. For example, if you open up a bunch of programs and then you close out of those and open up other new ones and then your computer seems kind of sluggish, um, it's slowing down, it's locking up or freezing up from time to time, then you may want to clean out your computer's memory. And to do that is just to shut down and restart your computer so it empties it out you restart your computer and then you can go ahead and work on your programs and have it run a little bit more efficiently. As far as installing or uninstalling programs, typically you'll get a prompt that says, hey, we just need to finish installing the program, go ahead and restart your computer. If it doesn't, you may want to go ahead and come over here and restart it anyways, it's up to you. Some programs don't require that you restart your computer. And then below that you have sleep. It'll put your computer into a power saving mode and it will save all your open programs into its memory and it will turn off your peripheral devices to try to save power, like your monitor. Now to wake your computer back up from its long winter's nap, you can either hit any key on the keyboard or move your mouse. Now you want to give it some time for it to wake up. I mean, it's not like you when the alarm clock goes off, you jump right out of bed. It needs time to turn everything on, so give it maybe 10 to 15 or 20 or 30 seconds, okay? I'm going to go ahead and click off in a blank area. Now if you're working on one of your programs here and it freezes up on you, or it says up here, not responding up in the title bar, what I recommend is that you try to close out of that one program so you don't have to shut down and restart your computer, especially if you have other programs that are open, like my Microsoft Word, okay? So the first thing I would do is come up here and click on the X and try to close out of that program. If it freezes up and it doesn't allow me to close out of it, 
Then the next step is, is to bring up the task manager. The task manager will do two things. First, it'll show me what program is not responding, if there's more than one here. And then second of all, it will help me to actually end that program. Now there's three ways to go ahead and open up the task manager. You can either hold down the control, alt, and delete key, and it will bring it up. Well, it'll bring up a new screen, and then on that screen, you want to click on the Start Task Manager button. Or you can do the other shortcut keys, Control, Shift, Escape, and it brings up the screen here, the Windows Task Manager. Let me go ahead and close out. Or you can come down here and find a blank area somewhere in your taskbar and give it a right click, and there it is. Go up and left click on Start Task Manager. Now down below on the Applications tab, it'll list all the open programs that you have on your desktop. And if one is not responding, like let's say it's my PowerPoint, it would say over here in the status column, not responding. So what I would do is I'd select it, come down here and click on End Task. When I click on it, hopefully it closes the program. If it doesn't, you may want to give it some time, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds. And if it's having issues, you may get another window that opens up here somewhere that says, do you want to end the process? Go ahead and click on the End Process button and give it, I don't know, another 20 or 30 seconds and then see if it closes out of the program. If it doesn't, then you may want to go ahead and go to your other open applications and try to save them. Click on the Save button and then go ahead and try shutting down or restarting your computer. So if I come down here and click on the Start button, go over and click on Shutdown, hopefully it shuts it down and then I can refresh the memory and hopefully everything works. Let me go ahead and click off in a blank area. But there may be times when you go ahead and you try to click on another window or click on the Start button and it's just like a nightmare a chain effect where everything's frozen, then what you want to do as a last resort is to hold down the power button on your computer from 5 to 10 seconds until your computer actually turns off and then go ahead and hit the power button to turn it back on. So you're doing a forced shutdown. Now that's the last resort. We want the computer to try to figure things out for itself so it doesn't hurt itself or damage the computer. And I've had this happen quite a few times so I can't tell you if there's any damage to my computer but hey, I've got to have a computer that actually works than one that's frozen. So when you turn on your computer, you may actually get a little screen that comes up that says, hey, this computer has problems because it shut down without you coming down here and clicking on the Start button and normally clicking on the Shutdown button. Do you want to go ahead and start the Windows in Normal mode, or do you want to start it in Safe mode? The reason why it's asking you that is because in Safe mode, it turns off all the non-essential programs for external devices, things that aren't essential to get the computer to run because maybe you installed a program and your Windows 7 does not like that program. So in safe mode, it's not running, you can actually uninstall it, okay? And then if it keeps happening and you keep powering down or forcing a shutdown and you restart your computer, after a couple of times of that, it should bring up a window that says, hey, you got issues, can I come in and help search your hard drive to find bad clusters or bad parts on your disk and try to fix them? You may want to go ahead and say yes, go ahead and search for these bad files and try to fix them. Another thing you can do is what's called a system restore, and we'll cover that in the Windows 7 Level 2 training videos. But outside of that, if your computer is really having issues, you may want to find some computer geek or take it to an IT person who can help you troubleshoot and find out what's wrong with your computer. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.